How good is the crop of safeties available for the 2024 NFL Draft? We're delivering our final rankings today on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. You are Locked On NFL Scouting with the Draft Dudes, your daily podcast for NFL and college football scouting. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's better than this? It's guys being dudes here on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast. We're the Draft Dudes. I'm Joe Marino from Locked On Bills. He's Kyle Krabs from Locked On Dolphins. And we are your NFL experts here with you daily to talk team building across the league on the Locked On NFL Scouting Podcast with the Draft Dudes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Want to issue a big thank you, shout out, and welcome to our everydayers. Those of you who make Locked On NFL Scouting your first listen every day, we appreciate y'all being here very, very much. Today's episode is brought to you by Monopoly Go. I admit it, I have a competitive side, and it is a big fan of Monopoly Go, the mobile hit twist on classic Monopoly. So join your friends and download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Joseph, happy Thursday. Happy one week from the NFL Draft Day to you. Thank God. We are, I'm ready. Brother. I mean, I'd love to have a little bit more time to watch a few more players. Like, I, I always can appreciate that. But the the narratives, the fan bases that are on the ledge, man, it's tough. It's exhausting. It's, I want it yeah, to be here. It um, feels like it gets a little more intense every year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The uh, That three-week gap from where most of the pro days wind down to uh, the actual start of the draft. And uh, lo and behold, here we are. And uh, every year we say, let's move the draft up two weeks. And every year we also say, would love to have a little bit more time to get into some more players. But uh, we are getting into safeties today, and I watched 16 Hmm. of them for the 2024 NFL Draft. So I feel pretty good about where I'm at and uh, pretty even distribution from top to bottom. My bell curve looks pretty appropriate for uh, the grades that I gave out. Yeah, I do too. Um, I'm I'm pretty full in the third and fourth round. Uh, I think that's kind of the sweet spot this year. I think there's some nice players that you can get in the first and second round, but I think the value could be in the third round. And um, I got one guy at the top that I really, really love, and I'm excited to kind of talk through these guys with you. I think there's, there's a, an angle to this conversation that's going to be important because like pretty much a lot of positions, it's about flavor and what you need, right? There's a lot of safeties in this crop that I think are good deep zone defenders, some guys that you think can play more as slot nickel players, some guys that are better like low safeties. So these rankings could certainly shift based on what your particular team needs because mm-hmm. there are so many players closely graded, but a lot of variety with this class. And I don't think it's star studded, right? Like I don't think it's overwhelming with like big time talent at the top, but I think there's starters to be found here. I think there's a lot of starters that are just skill specific starters and yeah. case case in point, you, you mentioned the middle rounds, uh, seven of my 16 are th- third and fourth round grades. So half of all the guys I did, again, you talk about bell curves. Nine that's 13, where the meat of it's at, right? Nine, uh, 13 for me, crap. Nine of 13. It's a healthy, healthy number. Yeah. Um, so you told, you alluded to a player at the top that you really loved. We're probably the same guy. We haven't confirmed that we graded this player officially as a safety or not, but Cooper, DeGene, Iowa, we're both sitting in safety land. Is that correct? Correct Absolutely. assumption to make? Absolutely. And it's not that he can't play corner, because I think he can. And I like him a lot at corner. I just love him at safety. I don't want to start the conversation by pointing out a weakness, but I, I think it's important for us to say this to understand why I think he's best at safety. I just don't think he has great transitional quickness, right? When he has to pattern match, some of that ability to kind of get in and out of those turns and transition, it's a bit elongated. He's a heck of an athlete. I just think there's some transitional quickness that might be lacking, and that's mitigated at safety on top of, I want to move this guy around, and I can do that more at safety. So as a qualifier, as we get into Cooper DeGene, I wanted to put that out there. Well, and I think it's also fair to point out that um, he played in the defense that had a lot of vision zone yeah, and playing from depth, right? And when you think about being a safety and using your vision, 
and having a wide field of vision to be able to process and anticipate and then not have the transitional challenges that come with being in a more tighter to the line of scrimmage assignment where you do have to protect yourself vertically as well versus having that leverage baked in that's the big difference and for cooper to be able to play from depth and run and fill and tackle from depth where he can take the i think he takes really good angles i think he's a great tackler even though he doesn't necessarily have like the largest wingspan uh that, that's out there regardless of that i think it it pops I think he's a plus size player at safety as a, as a defensive back 45th percentile arm length, 37th percentile wingspan, but 64th percentile weight over 200 pounds. I think that shows up with how he plays. Yeah. I think his linear explosiveness really good. And obviously the ball skills. Oh uh, boy. Three pick sixes in a single season is, is enough to, to develop you quite the reputation and maybe didn't have three pick sixes again this past season, but nevertheless, some of the plays on the ball, while keying and and reading the quarterback is I think if you want the best version of Cooper, it is at safety. But I agree with you wholeheartedly. If you were to play uh, a lot of quarters based defense or, or do cover six and you wanted to have Cooper DeGene be somebody who was an outside corner in one of those systems, I think he could do it. I just don't think you're going to get the best version of the player as far as being an impact player. An added bonus to Cooper DeGene, I thought you outlined his strengths as a player extremely well. Guy's a playmaker, right? He's a physical, athletic playmaker. Yeah. And I love that about him. Also gives you some big-time value in the return game. Uh, for his career, 31 returns and 26 more fair catches, and that's important to me because I care so much about muffs. Like, I'm not interested in muffs, bro. Like, Miss me all the way if you muff the football right. as a punt returner. So he's fielded, oh, God, draft dudes do math, 57 punts in college with zero muffs and an average of 13.1 on the ones that he did return. Plus, he had a touchdown and another touchdown called back because that illegal fair catcher. Do you remember that was nonsense? Yes, running off to the sideline. Yeah. I guess I forget. Was it Illinois? Minnesota. I think Minnesota. it was Minnesota. It was, it was it's Minnesota. like absolutely bonkers punt return, but it didn't, it didn't wind up standing. Um, and I, I, dude, we haven't really talked a lot about the new kickoff rule. You and I, I think it's probably really relevant today in this conversation, partly because of Cooper DeGene's return ability, but also I think some of these safeties are going to benefit from that. These are, you know, you need guys that can play off contact that are, that can tackle. And I think it helps safeties and their roster ability as we get deeper into this conversation uh, to be able to contribute on special teams in a more meaningful way. I was listening to Bill Belichick actually um, yesterday on the McAfee show. And I'll give you a take on that. I think post Patriot Belichick versus post Patriot Brady. I'm going to like Belichick a whole lot more. I know people are fall. Kyle's disagreeing with me. That's fine. We can live in this world. I'm, I'm happy to disagree with you on this. I'm going to enjoy Belichick, the analyst a whole lot more than I have anything with Tom Brady being drunk, drinking avocado vodka, tossing the Lombardi trophy, like miss me with everything with Tom Brady. I, I I'm liking the post Patriot bill. Uh, but the point being there, he's like, Not this new kickoff rule is going to open up so much opportunities. Like 90% of these kickoffs are just touchbacks. There's so many more plays to be made that are coming this year. I think that benefits these safeties. Yeah. Um, curious how much of that opportunity he will, will get relative to if you're drafting him to be a defensive starter. I think there's a whole uh, ideological question that teams now have to ask themselves about your primary offensive and defensive players. And is the safer rules for kick returns enough of an incentive to put them out there in those opportunities? Um, until roster the, side, until you can dress more players on game day, I mean, you're somewhat limited, right? Well, yes and no, because you have a little already have a little bit more flexibility baked in with the new third quarterback rule. Yeah, so you get an extra roster spot and you get the two practice squad elevations. On any given week, so it's there's some things still that dress 48, man. Still are still 48. scratching the surface there. Um, I think teams that have a lot of versatility will maybe field more pure special teams type players on their roster, and uh, I think you've seen a couple of teams do that this off season. But that's a conversation for another day. Uh, any other players that sniff a first round grade? No. I had I had a late one, early two, but it's on the lower end of that spectrum. So I would say definitively like 
would probably not draft this player in the top 40. Um, but that's also part of a testament to the depth of the class and, so, and this individual class and some of the other players that are available. So Day I can talk two. about it next. Day two is loaded, but we're going to break those players down for you here in just a moment. So be sure to stick with us. I've been told I'm a competitive person. I know Kyle Krabs is probably the most competitive person I've ever met. Uh, and I can tell you that we do have competitive sides and our competitive sides are a big fan of Monopoly Go. I'm sure you've heard of it. It's been downloaded over 150 million times and it's a great twist on Monopoly where you play on not one, but hundreds of Monopoly boards in crazy locations building up amazing cities that bring you big money. But the best part, is messing with my friends. I can charge them rent on my iconic properties, just like Monopoly, but now I can also rob their vaults of riches for myself, and the leaderboards show me who the biggest Monopoly tycoon is. But it's not just my competitive side that loves it. You can team up with friends and people all around the world in time tournaments to earn huge rewards. So get in the game and join your friends. Download Monopoly Go now for free on the App Store or Google Play. Hundred and fifty million times, that's it. That's all. Feels like it's a been lot. Downloaded. Feels like a lot, man. Imagine having an app that's downloaded 150 million times. We should make one. Let's put our heads together this offseason. See what we can come up with. Yeah, maybe so. Safeties. Cooper DeGene stands alone as the first round grade for both of us at the safety position. Um Give me your second round grades at safety if they exist. I have two second round grades. I also have two. Javon Bullard, Georgia. Dadrian Taylor Demerson, Texas Tech. Okay. Javon Bullard was my late one, early two. Um, really versatile player. I, I liked all the different ways that he could be lined up and used. Uh, I think he's a clean player. And obviously, when you're playing for Kirby. Uh, there's a certain football IQ expectation that you have, and he passes that with flying colors, I think, as far as just the football intelligence. So versatile, super smart player, uh, instinctive safety from Georgia playing in the biggest stage. You feel like you're prepped for the, the big leagues. That pick against TCU in the uh, 2022 <laughs> national championship, oh, man, insane. Yeah. Insane. My uh, other safety is not Dadrian Taylor Demerson, who is my fourth safety and my first with a third round grade. Kitan Oladapo. Oh, baby, let's go. Dude, his, his dude's a baller. Oh, wow. I like I like him a lot. You you have him higher than me, though. I, I have a, a late two on Oladapo, and I wasn't quite sure where I was going to check in because uh, I had heard some good things. I knew he was a big safety. Yeah. But uh, I checked in at, at six foot two, uh, 215 pounds, long, 32 and a half inch arms. Uh, maybe you, I, I think y y you would point to a little bit more short area explosiveness as compared to like deep range on the back end. But I thought he was really versatile for the ways that he was used. I thought he made some really nice plays in coverage against tight ends. Yeah. He ha had one diving pass breakup against Oregon, Oregon down yeah. in the red zone that, that really stood out as far as like his transition and just the length. Like he, he's so long at the catch point that I think you put him on guys that he can run similarly to, and he's going to have a lot of success because he's big, long, physical. Uh, but he's he's more loose than I, I think maybe what you would expect for a six foot two safety. And he he lays the wood on people too. He did you see the hit he put on Cam Ward along the side sideline? Yeah. Oh, holy cow, man! He sent him head over heels, flying out of bounds. So I, I think he's a, a good tackler. I think he's probably a split field safety only. Yep. But he can get down in the box. Right. So now you got some sub package flexibility to get down in the box slash play in the nickel against tight ends. That gave me enough of a wide menu of ways to use him. Like, you know what? I'm, I could sit here and split hairs and say, you know, realistically, like consensus thinks he's a third for route. Like the grade was the great. And Oladapo, I'm a huge fan of. I really like his game. Man, I came into this conversation today, and I know in the next segment we're going to get to day three favorites, and I'm like, man, I'm going to talk about Oladapo, right? Oladapo. This be a Kyle's like, yeah, bet. 
second round grade. I'm like, okay, okay. Uh, I like them too. Um, I, I like pound, you know, pound a table for your guys, man. I love it. What, what was, what was the concern that kept you in day three? Well, first of all, uh, he comes in at a, a grade of 78, no, excuse me, 74.68 and a 75 is the cutoff to get to a third round grade. So he's knocking on the door of a day two grade for me. I probably call him like officially like a three, four. Um, I think with him, it just came down to may, maybe just not being the guy that I think could be like a deep zone defender. Like I, mm-hmm. I think he has to play in split zones. And I do think you make a good point that he his ability to work as a low safety kind of mitigates that because there's still a spot for him. Um, he, he's a good football player. I don't I don't have anything like I'm not going to sit here and 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 bash him. I I thought maybe he was like. You have, I think, you have to tap into the versatility. You have to use him in different ways to really bring yeah. out a lot in in his game. So, I think he's a good football player. Maybe he's a, he's like a little bit older. Maybe like I'm if I'm trying to remember the things that were on he's my 23. mind. Twenty three. He's twenty three, which is pretty much twenty four in his rookie season. Like that's the that's like the new norm with this post COVID draft cycle. So, well, hopefully, I, I think this is it for it, right. And then we're th- those guys will all be out of the system. God, I hope so. It's been so annoying. I don't know what age guys so, are. And I, I guess here's the thing that that I can at least draw a little bit of enthusiasm for the split field stuff too, because he he spent more snaps in the slot and he spent more snaps in the box as a sub package player and kind of like a low hole mm-hmm. spy or, or coverage uh, linebacker in their their dime stuff this past season than he did playing deep safety. He he took a hundred more snaps in both the box and the slot than he did as a deep safety this year. But the two previous years when he still had played meaningful snaps, he's played over 775 snaps in each of the last three seasons, 2022 and 2021, he played the majority of his snaps as a deep safety. So you kind of have this evolution of role where you got the best version of him by being able to move him around, but he at least has an operating threshold based on the full term of his, his career as a starter at Oregon state being a deep, deep half player as a, as a safety as well. I'd love to get into Daydron Taylor Demerson here. Let's go for it. 10 interceptions over the last three years, high school running back switch over to safety in college. I just think he's such a instinctive, versatile, fast, physical player. Um, plays the game with a lot of convictions. I love that I can, I think I can play him anywhere, man to man in the slot, split zones. I think he could be a one high guy. I think he an- anticipates routes extremely well. Um, I, he's a coverage player, I think, through and through. That's where he's at his best, but still shows you that willingness to be physical and play off contact and tackle, right? There's a, there's he a, he has urge. one of the better missed tackle rates of the safeties that we're, we're talking about in this class, too. His, his, his career is, uh, 2023 missed tackle rate was only 10%, which for safeties is yeah, that's a pretty good. solid number. Most of these guys are like 15% or higher. Right. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's just there's that dynamic of him. I think he's pretty complete. Maybe you wish he was a little bigger. He's 5'10, 197, 30 and 7 eighths on the arms. Uh, so maybe you wish he was just a tick bigger in all of those categories. But I think he he's a really exciting blend of versatility, coverage instincts, physicality athleticism there's just a lot there that i love you know i'm gonna make fun of you because he's already 24 right yeah i mean i'm sure <laughs> i'm sure uh, he's, he's 20 23 uh pff has him january 20th 2000 was his birthday date of birth i don't so we I, may have we may have a source war uh, uh, that, uh, can't, can't blame us uh i have I, I january 20 2001 Mm-hmm. The mm-hmm. the other thing that I would credit to Taylor Demerson too is he's like yes he's a deep safety but I thought his eagerness to get down and, and tackle uh, and that that's the, for me feels like the big point of emphasis in in this recent couple of cycles is you're playing from depth to limit explosive plays. So how you do in all of the things to finish plays in front of your face is really important. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought he showed a good appetite for that, and he did it in the Big 12 where there's already spacing issues with the offenses that you're playing in. 
right? You already have more grass to cover. Yeah. It's a good there, point. There's a find me a less enviable conference to play safety in than in the Big 12, or at least what the Big 12 was before it's become what it's going to become. So I, I think that was an added incentive for me to come away really liking him. And that's why he checks in as my safety four with a, a third round grade. All right. So I think we got through our first and second round grades, if I'm not mistaken, from both of us, because I had first and second round for me is DeGene, Cooper DeGene, Javon Bullard, uh, Dadrian Taylor Demerson. And for you, it's DeGene, Bullard, Oladapo, and Demerson. And Demerson's a, a early three. Okay. I got we three more threes to go. We have a lot to get to in segment three. <laughs> Be sure to stick with us. Oh, yeah, we're in trouble. Today's podcast is brought to you by Yahoo Finance. For more than 25 years, Yahoo Finance has been the brand behind every great investor. Whether you're a seasoned investor or are looking for extra guidance, Yahoo Finance gives you the tools and data that you need all in one place. They are the number one finance destination, producing a holistic look at the financial news cycle, including breaking news, original editorial perspectives, analyst ratings, independent research, customizable charts, and so much more. You can also securely link your brokerage accounts for a unified view of your wealth, including 401k and other investments. Of course, you get a comprehensive perspective, and that's what sets apart great investors, and it's how Yahoo Finance ensures you have the insight to look at your wealth in its entirety. With a community of over 90 million users each month, their real strength is helping you on your way to financial success. For comprehensive financial news and analysis, Visit the brand behind every great investor, yahoofinance.com, the number one financial destination, yahoofinance.com. That's yahoofinance.com. Let's finish the threes. Okay. Your other third round grades, I'll give mine, and then we'll yeah. decide how deep we need to go. Into okay. It. Third round grades, Malik Mustafa, Wake Forest, Cole Bishop, Utah. Tyler Newbin, Minnesota, Jaden Hicks, Washington State, Tyke Smith, Georgia, Kalen Bullock, USC. Okay. So you took my threes and my fours. All right. So like the, every single one of those guys is my threes and my fours. Okay. So that was six total players, right? Yeah. Okay. So you had seven total with those six and Taylor Demerson. Okay, my threes and fours were Dadrian Taylor Demerson, Tyke Smith, Georgia, Jaden Hicks, Washington State, Cole Bishop, Utah. Those were my threes. And then I had three fours, which was Malik Mustafa, Kalen Bullock, and Tyler Newman. How, where do we, yeah. where, how, how do you want to split it? Okay, let me point out I had two fours, Kitan Oladapo. And Cameron Kitchens, I have a four on. I'd like to, this is where I'd like to go with this. I watch Cameron Kitchens, right? Yep. And I'm like, man, this guy's a good football player, right? I don't, I don't, like, you can be, you should be concerned about the athleticism, right? And, and like, it's not good, but he's a good football player. Physical, makes plays in the ball, hunts, like, very good. But I'm like, man, he's, he, this athletic profile is not good. And then I watch Malik Mustafa. And I found the athletic version of Cameron oh, Kitchens, right? Kitchens. It's like, all right, thank God he exists. So the point that I'm making here is I really like Malik Mustafa out of Wake Forest, not only because he's from my high school, Weddington High School, shout out, um, but he's just good. And I feel like there's a lot of versatility there. He's physical. He hunts. Maybe you wish he made a few more plays in the ball, but when he had some opportunities, I, I thought he was really impressive. I love how he rakes at the ball and kind of tries to dislodge it as well, like just forcing fumbles as well. You watch the Clemson game? Yes. What did you think of that that deep breakup where he was single high and had his hips flipped away from that skinny post and then came back to it and still made the diving PBU? Yes. It's there. Yes. I, I think he's a stud, man. An absolute stud. He's a monster. And I, I think for me, um, I, I loved what he brought from a tackling perspective. Him and Oladapo, I thought, were the two most impressive tacklers in the class. 
Um, so I, I was fired up when I watched Mustafa myself because I, I came away knowing that he tested really well from an explosiveness standpoint with his, his pro day. Um, but had some questions about, okay, it's a 5'10", 210 pound safety that doesn't have a lot of length, right? 30 inch arms. So you're kind of cognizant of that. I think he made up for it in a big way. Uh, the number one uh, size comparable for him as a, as a player, I actually think he compares pretty favorably to, which is Mike Edwards. Hmm. Remember him out of Kentucky and yeah. played Current Kansas Buffalo Bills starting safety. Yeah. That's, that's a player. I, I saw that size profile comparable and I'm like, yeah, there's some parallels in the way that those guys play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Edwards is, has been a guy who's taken a lot of NFL snaps. So, yeah. um, I, I just wish there was a little bit more dynamic range to make you feel like, okay, he can really do it all as compared to, um, he's a functional player in, in deeper zones, but I think he really does shine when he's closer to the line of scrimmage. And that's such an interesting contrast to Kinchins who made his entire impact playing single high free safety at Miami. And then lo and behold, it comes out. The athletic profile is not going to lend itself well to him being that at the next level. I really struggle with Kinchins because I agree he's the player, but that's like, it's like a not meeting standard threshold athletic profile which is super concerning in a lot of ways. It's a lot like Jaquan Johnson coming out of Miami or like Jaquan Johnson was mocked in the first rounds before the season. And then I think every like made tons of plays, instinctive, physical, you love the demeanor. And then it's like, well, he's small. He doesn't have athleticism. Right? <laughs> like you, you just have to have those things. Five eleven two zero three, ran a four, six, five. Uh, below 50th, below 40th percentile on both his jumps as far as explosiveness goes for, for Kinchins. And the tackling was bad. I thought that the tackling, there were hits. Because he leaves good, his feet. He's a good striker, but he's yeah. not a good tackler. Right, so he falls so off. Now, right. So now it's like, okay, now you're a low-range, low-range center field safety that can't tackle well. Man, I really don't know what to do with that, you know? He'd be somebody else. I, I would let somebody else figure out right. Cam Kinchins. Um, how about Newbin, who's some of the same concerns from an athletic profile standpoint, a little bit of a bigger player, a little bit of a longer player, but I think he's an exclusive split field player. Um, and that's why he kind of came in, in the, the chunk of the, uh, middle class here. I, I think you look at all of the names that were threes and fours for me. Taylor Demerson, Tyke Smith, Jaden Hicks, Cole Bishop. These are different stylistic kinds of players. Mustafa, Kane Bullock, and Nubin. I think all of them are much more dynamic athletes than, than Nubin. And because of that, that's where they kind of, in that closely bunched group of players graded together, Nubin came in with the lowest grade of them for me. Yeah, and I, Nubin, I, I like the ball skills and in, in kind of that split zone drive on the ball, but that lack of athleticism shows up like his ability or inability to leverage the sideline in pursuit. I thought oh, up, there were a couple times a he, came, he came downhill running the D gap yeah. and then he had to flatten it way yeah. out and he gave up the edge. Yeah. Like way too many times. Um, I, I could see why people would like him because if you, if you're of the philosophy and we know these people, Kyle, that say the most important thing that you can do as a safety is to uh, take away the football. All right, yeah, he's going to check that box. But, man, there's other stuff to it. Right. Especially in today's game, right? Yeah. With the way it's, it's it's trending. I think the the UNC game felt like it was a game, if I'm remembering correctly, where there were, was more than one occasion in that yep. game where that was one I watched. Run, runs bounced outside off of, of him. Um, You want to touch on either Jaden Hicks or Cole Bishop quickly? Yeah, I would like to. Um, I they're pretty similar to for me. I actually have Bishop a little higher. Um, these are like, I think they're bigger. They're both kind of bigger safeties that I, I feel like they've made their hay kind of working as low safeties. Uh, super athletic, both of them, both very physical. Um, I I felt like I was discriminating against safeties this year that like I didn't 
see them make a lot of impactful plays in the passing game. Like that's what I really wanted to see when I was watching safeties this year. Mm-hmm. And I don't feel like I saw as much of that from those players, but I did see size, athleticism, physicality, but the coverage ability was a little lower for me. I thought Cole Bishop showed one of the better sideline to sideline range in the intermediate and short areas of the field as like a rally player, not necessarily playing high and showing range. But I think that's where I, I it helped me again in this this very busy group of of middle tier safeties to kind of find a little bit of uh, comfort in him is I'm watching him as the backside safety run down the ball carrier outside the numbers to the field. And he's beating his Mike linebacker and Sion Vaki to the football in the process, but just like the range that he has and how he saw it and how he got on the hoof and how he rallied to the ball. So um, the, the big question I have there, and I think it, it hurts him with making some of those plays and coverage that you talked about, Joe is the length as a yeah. player. Oh, six foot two safety with a 17th percentile wingspan and a third percentile arm length and 29 and three quarters inch arms. It's weird, I think right? it, I, it hurts him as a tackler yeah, and it, for sure. and it, and it hurts him with his sphere of influence as a, a coverage player trying to interrupt the catch point. So that's something for him. I think you just have a smaller uh, margin of error to be in the catch point. So you, you're really going to have to be on top of your instinct perspective, but I loved his athleticism I loved his pursuit skills. I love some of his striking ability. I think he's a feasible uh, coverage player. I just don't think he's ever going to be a game-changing player in that regard. But um, in this class, like I, I do think he's a, a viable starter you could come out of with day, in day two. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, the rest of my rankings... I had DeGene Bullard, Oladapo, round one and two. Then Taylor Demerson, Tyke Smith, Jaden Hicks, Cole Bishop in the third round. Malik Mustafa was one one hundredth of a point from being a third round grade. He's like the highest four I can get. Uh, Caden Bull- Kalen Bullock, excuse me, Tyler Newbin. My fives were James Williams from Miami, glorified linebacker. Might probably just end up being a linebacker when it's all said and done. <laughs> um, like who's the Virginia Tech kid that went to the Raiders? Uh, Divine Diablo. Diablo. Yeah like that kind of mold of player. And Josh Proctor from Ohio State, I also gave a 5-2. Uh, I gave sixes to Tyler Owens and Sion Vaki, kind of fascinating athletic players that I just think the light bulb needs to come on and how they see the field. And then I had sevens on Kinchins and, and Bo Braid. Mm. Seven on Kinchins. You're a single high free safety that doesn't tackle well and I it has yeah. a failing grade for your athletic profile. I just don't know what to do with it. Yeah, I get it. I get it. Wow. And, and I, I, in the summertime, I, I really liked Cam Kinchins, and I thought he regressed as a tackler, and I thought he regressed in coverage this year versus last year. And then the athletic profile came out as a like does not pass baseline threshold. I had a really hard time with it. Mine top to bottom: Cooper DeGene, first round grade, second round grades on Javon Bullard and Dadrian Taylor Demerson, third round grades on Malik Mustafa, Cole Bishop, Tyler Newbin, Jaden Hicks, Tyke Smith, Kalen Bullock, fourth round on Katan Oladapo, uh, fifth round Cameron Kitchens, and then uh, late day threes on Sione Vaki and Tyler Owens. There you go. It's the safeties. Real I, it, a better group than I think I thought it was going to be. I, was I think excited. so. Yeah. I, I didn't hear a lot of buzz about safeties, and I don't know if that's like positional value wise, but I, I think there's a lot of quality options that you feel like could be starters for you in this class. I think part of that is we went into this year. It's Tyler Noob and Cam Kinchins. Those are the safeties, right? And then like yeah. they're they're not. They, they both fell off. Yeah. Yeah. So that is going to do it for us here on Locked on NFL Scouting. I'm Kyle Krabs. He is Joe Marino. We appreciate you guys for checking out the show. Make it a great rest of your day. We are out of here.